Well, morning folks, welcome to Coffee with Job. Actually, to be honest, it's breakfast with Job. I've just finished my scrambled egg. We're gonna look at Job chapter 15 and verses one to 13. I'll, I'll read those in a moment, but just to say what we're looking at is, is words, how we use words. Um, this is Eliphaz speaking. Then Eliphaz the Temanite replied, would a wise man answer with empty notions or fill their belly with the hot east wind? Would they argue with useless words, with speeches that have no value? But you even undermine piety and hinder devotion to God. Your sin prompts your mouth. You adopt the tongue of the crafty. Your own mouth condemns you, not mine. Your own lips testify against you. Are you the first man ever born? Were you brought forth before the hills? Do you listen on God's counsel? Do you have a monopoly on wisdom? What do you know that we do not know? What insights do you have that we do not have? The gray-haired and the aged are on our side. Men even older than your father. Are God's consolations not enough for you? Words spoken gently to you? Why is your heart carried away and why do your eyes flash so you vent your rage against God and pour out such words from your mouth? Wow. Oh, we're learning what Job's comforters are, eh? If these are meant to be gentle words. In, in his first speech, Eliphaz was much more conciliatory. Now he's lost patience. And, you know, sometimes that happens, doesn't it? We, we're talking to people and it's interesting. You know, I, I, I listen to people sometimes and they talk very gently and kindly to someone. And I know from what they've told me that they're, they don't feel that. They're very angry. And I, I wonder if that's honest. I think once you get beneath the surface, a lot of our surface conversation is very poli polite, but I think once you get beneath the surface, then what's in the heart really does come out. And now here, Eliphaz sees Job as a hardened rebel against God. He, he's really asking him, who are you? Again, if YouTube would let me, I would play the who's, who are you? Uh, it's a big thing, isn't it? I mean, have you ever said to anyone, someone you love in a moment, who do you think you are? Because that's what Eliphaz is saying. Who do you think you are? He accuses Job of irreverence and of arrogance. He calls him windy and arrogant. He says his words are useless. He says that Job speaks too much because of his guilt. He attacks Job for thinking he's wiser than anyone else, although that's not what Job says. He quizzes him in verse 11 about his relationship to God. Are God's consolations not enough for you? He's really asking, are you not content with what God is doing for you? God is impure. Sorry, not God, but Job is impure, unrighteous and corrupt. Now, why is he so angry? I think sometimes you can touch a nerve with some people and it can happen, of course, it can happen to us as well. And I think what's going on here is that... As Ash points out, Eliphaz and his friends buy into the system. And it's a system which says, which has the world black and white, which says, if you suffer, it's because you've done bad things. And if you do good things, you will prosper. And the world is much more complex than that. And Job, by what he is saying, he's really saying, yes, you can suffer for bad things, but there's also what we would describe as redemptive suffering. And Eliphaz is just furious at this. He knows that Job's words are empty, arrogant, dangerous, and hurtful. You, you see this, you know, it, it's not the invention of social media that's caused people to be abusive. Social media facilitates it and makes it easier. But boy, when you touch someone's idol, boom, the language that comes out is really quite extraordinary. And then people play the hurt card. El Eliphaz does this. Oh, you've hurt me by what you've said. You can't say that. It will hurt me. Well, I want to contrast this with two things in the New Testament. One, of course, is Jesus, the man who was full of grace and truth. Never a man spoke like this man, who spoke with authority, who was also clear, strong and dangerous. And by the way, who was also crucified for his words. I find it fascinating. I've just written a piece about a bishop in... Uh, New South Wales who got attacked by the press for what he said from the pulpit and he was accused of being anti-gay and all the rest of it. You listen to the sermon, read the article, um, listen to the sermon and it's not that at all. 
But even Christians are saying, well, you wouldn't have upset people if you hadn't. Yeah, you will. If you teach the Bible, you will upset people. And that's why we need to be so careful, isn't it? Um, I was going to mention the passage in James chapter 3, but time has gone, so have a look at that yourself. But Jesus was crucified for the words he said. Eliphaz is really wrong in this, his anger and his bitterness. Maybe we can learn from it not to be like that. And maybe we should think very carefully about the words that we use. And I'm looking in the mirror here. God bless you and see you tomorrow.